SpaceX did some amazing work last year. Its growth was outstanding and it has definitely dominated the commercial aerospace industry. The company is still rapidly growing and has a lot of mind-blowing projects in the works. It is very easy to almost think of the private space industry as being limited to Elon Musk's brainchild. But it is not. There are several space startups in the USA alone that could give SpaceX a run for their money this year. Want to know who and how? Stay around till the end of this video to find out and make sure to like and subscribe for more quality content just like this. SpaceX has a great advantage in the commercial aerospace industry. Its rocket building skills are legendary and it seems to have a nearly bottomless pool of capital and resources. However, its Falcon 9, a 200 foot tall launcher, is not the only way to launch satellites. This gives the smaller startups a lot of hope and room to succeed. To beat the best, you need to find a way to be better. This is the path these companies have adopted as they try to create cheaper, more efficient ways to launch satellites into the Earth's orbit. Many of these startups have made incredible progress that ranges from denying industry standard launch patterns to being a breath away from public trading. Let's take a look at some of them, shall we? Virgin Orbit has launched a rocket without the classic liftoff mechanism. The aerospace company owned by Richard Branson spun off from Virgin Galactic and has since been making waves. Admittedly, they have had their fair share of failed launches and crashes, but that is completely normal. Their speciality is the unconventional, and that needs time to be perfect. Early this year, Orbit launched 10 small satellites into orbit using an airplane. Cosmic Girl is the company's modified Boeing 747 that carries the payload under its left wing. The satellites were fit into the 70-foot tall Launcher 1 rocket to be launched. The plane took off from a runway and fired the rocket at an altitude of 35,000 feet. The rocket engaged its engines from there and entered orbit. The 10 payloads were all for Virgin Orbit's client, NASA. Orbit refers to NASA as an early adopter of the company's services, and they have trusted them even after an earlier test launch failed. The small satellites are part of NASA's educational launch of Nano Satellites Program, which is also known as ELNA. It aims to let high school and college students design and assemble small satellites that NASA then pays to launch into space. The small satellites launched came from more than three colleges in the USA. One of the small sats is designed to be a temperature monitor from the University of Colorado in Boulder. Another is to study the collision of tiny particles in space, and this came from the University of Central Florida. An experimental radiation detector satellite came from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette, also made the cut. With this system, Virgin Orbit will be able to launch anywhere from a runway. This saves a lot of money and time. With a payload capacity of up to 500 kilograms, this is truly a large step in the right direction. Astrospace is also pushing itself in the battle for dominance. It has been described as the fastest privately funded company in history to demonstrate orbital launch capability. The company was formerly known as Ventions LLC and was based in San Francisco. The aerospace research and design firm had over 10 years of history in developing aerospace tech with NASA and DARPA. In 2016, it later was reincorporated as Astrospace. Astra conducted two suborbital test flights in 2018. These took off from the Pacific Spaceport Complex, Alaska in July and one in November. It was believed that the launches were failed, but Astra said they weren't. They said the second was much shorter than anyone is used to. While Astra might not have been able to launch another rocket successfully, it has a good amount of technology waiting to be used. Earlier this month, Astra announced that it is going public. This will make them the first aerospace company on the Nasdaq exchange. The small company is going public by merging with a special purpose acquisition company, SPAC, called Holicity, which will pump a cash investment of $500 million and raise the company's value to $2 billion. We plan to deploy the proceeds of this transaction to accelerate our growth and operation to meet the demands of our customers and to fully support our capital needs as we continue to ramp. Kellen Brannan, who is the chief financial officer of Astra, made this statement at an investor call. Astra is planning to be able to launch 300 times in 2025. Seeing as how that is an average of three times the launch number of 2020, it is safe to say that Astra plans to give SpaceX a run for their money. Blue Shift is another small launch company doing good things. Founded in 2014, this employee-owned aerospace company is the first of its kind, based in Maine, USA. Its primary funding was obtained from NASA's Small Business Innovation Research SBIR grant, Maine Technology Institute, and the Maine Space Grant Consortium. 
Blue Shift CEO Sasha Derry has been experimenting and testing a new bio-derived solid fuel since the company was founded. After obtaining funding, it could then work further on the hybrid rocket they had developed. All their hard work is finally paying off. The company hit a new level earlier this month with its first rocket launch which was a low-altitude flight of a small-sounding rocket named Stardust 1.0. It's a single-stage prototype which can only carry 18 pounds of payload and is produced to only achieve suborbital space. That may not look like a lot, but it is good enough to put small research equipment up into suborbital space. The cost will put launches within range for smaller companies and academic institutions. The rocket was powered by the biofuel the company has been developing. Stardust 1.0 flew to a great height of just over 4,000 feet, 1,222 meters, and used a parachute to return to the ground. The company had to intentionally underfuel the rocket to stay consistent with the FAA's restrictions on time and height for amateur rocketeering. Ultimately, Blue Shift's goal is to reach Earth orbit and make Stardust rockets commercial as carriers of nanosatellites. While Astra, Blue Shift, and Orbit are charting new lines, Rocket Lab is on the same track as SpaceX. They offer the same reusable rocket services and future, but are out to do it at a fraction of SpaceX's price. The small satellite and delivery rockets Pioneer has launched 97 rockets and counting. The USA company has its head office in New Zealand and has made great progress with its rocket Electron. The two-stage booster is four times smaller than SpaceX's Falcon 9 and costs about 10% of what it costs SpaceX to fly a mission into orbit. Rocket Lab has many plans this year, and it includes launching its 100th rocket which will be ahead of their moon mission later this year. It's nothing short of a complete transformation in the way we go to space, Peter Beck, the chief executive officer said about a multiple mission the company is planning. The mid-March launch would deploy six satellites for commercial and government customers, carried by its Photon Padstone spacecraft, launched from Rocket Lab's Maya Peninsula site, ahead of its moon mission later this year. Last year, Rocket Lab announced its contract to send a satellite into the same lunar orbit targeted by NASA for Gateway, an outpost to be used by astronauts before descending to the moon's surface. The Photon will deploy six satellites in an orbit 550 kilometers above Earth, before reigniting its engine to move to a lower orbit at 450 kilometers, where it would deploy the last satellite. Rocket Lab will be another one to look out for. Apart from these four, there is another company that SpaceX needs to be wary of. Where there is an Elon Musk, there's a Jeff Bezos, it seems. Bezos' space venture, Blue Origin, also has plans to give Elon Musk reason to keep working hard. Bezos founded Blue Origin in 2000. And the company is now headed by Chief Executive Officer Bob Smith. Jeff is a multi-billionaire in dollars and the richest man in the world because of its famous company, Amazon. Bezos has said multiple times that his next major project would need to focus on getting Blue Origin off the ground. Let's take a brief look at their plans. Origin's major goal in the industry is to fly people into space, not just satellites. Its reports say that it is getting really close to this goal because in January, the company completed its 14th successful mission. The Guardian reports about the mission. The new Shepard rocket blasted off at 1717 GMT from the company's private launch site in West Texas, carrying an upgraded crew capsule containing a test dummy dubbed Mannequin Skywalker. Following its separation from the booster, the crew capsule reached an altitude of 66 miles, 107 kilometers above mean sea level, placing it 4.3 miles, 7 kilometers, higher than the Kármán line, the official boundary between Earth's atmosphere and outer space. The New Shepard program is structured to take six space visitors on a suborbital flight where they can share about three minutes of lightness. The total flight time for this particular test was 10 minutes and 10 seconds. And within that a lot of time, the capsule was made to rotate at 2 to 3 degrees per second, so that future passengers could share a 360 degree view of orbit during the flight. SpaceX may have major plans for the year, but it is obvious that quite a few other companies are nipping at their heels. Of course, SpaceX is already well on its way to making a dent in its calendar for the year, which includes its Falcon 9 launching 16 satellites. These satellites are additions to the company's Starlink broadband network. It's very easy to not worry about the company though. Elon Musk has always been very vocal about his views on hard work, and this shows in the results of both Tesla and SpaceX. In recent news, Musk's decisions and tweets have had financial and tech fans in awe. That's something we will talk about some other time.
competition has always been the best way to get more out of a company. Will Musk respond to these threats with even more innovation? Let us know what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching our video. While you're here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there.